Avian Pioneers, this is MJKK613.14. Unofficial pie through my eyes. Also a mod in English chats, MJKK61. Um, you know, I've been, I put a few videos here real quick. They've been, they've been long. I've been trying, you know, I don't know what to say, guys, or ladies and gentlemen. This is me. Until I get that, whatever thought process I have going on, and it may be off. I'm not saying I'm, I, <clears throat> I'm, this is unofficial. How I see it, how I view it, how I view pie. And until I get that thought process out, it runs how it runs, okay? You know, I, yeah, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, five to 10 minutes, whatever it is, that's, I mean, that's what you're supposed to post. Well, that ain't me. As much as I, as much as I would love to do that and try to do that, that's just not me. You don't want to watch it all the way to the end, don't watch it all the way to the end. Watch it in bits and pieces. It doesn't, I'm not going after YouTube votes. I'm not looking to build a community, you know, I'm not looking to build a following. I'm just looking to put out what I think is the most correct information other than core. I mean, I try to keep, I try to keep my information on point at Pi, around Pi, what is official to Pi. I have no tie to core team. I mean, being a mod, yes, we sit down. And, I mean, they have monthly meetings or every other month we sit down. We're updated. We're updated pretty regular. I mean, when they're not busy or whatever. I mean, but I have no no ties to core team. This is all what I've learned. But I've had interaction with core team. I've had interaction with other mods. I've had interaction with people from other projects. I've debated with experts in whatever field, okay? So, but I think, I think what, I don't want to say sets me apart or makes me different, right? Because I'm not. I'm just a pioneer, just like you. I push the button every day. It's just, when I read the first white paper the first time, it was different than anything else I'd ever investigated, read, dug, whatever. It opened up, I mean, as I was reading the paper, it took me someplace else. I mean, I went into another, I went into another space. Okay? Which, for me, opened up and said, oh, this one, this one is different. Why? And when I first got the pie, I knew it was different. I didn't know why it was different. I didn't know what made it different. And I, over time, I've learned. I mean, because if things don't sit right, and they're, they're in my, I find out what what it is. I don't go to, I just don't go to and find an answer to, to fill my, I, I, I look for what I think is the truth. I mean, I don't, I don't care what the outcome is, because, yes, in the beginning, I was, I was just like everybody else. I wanted to control this thing. <laughs> oh, man. What I see in chat now, yeah, it gets muted and whatever it is. But when I first got here, no, you guys don't hold a candle to what what I was asking. What? Oh man, yeah, no, I was driving mods crazy. I was driving developers crazy. I was driving everybody crazy. I know it was. I would walk into a room. I mean, I would show up in a room and I would text. I would put out one post. I'd clear the room, guaranteed. And anybody that was here back then that knows me <laughs> knows I'm speaking the truth. Okay. I couldn't text. It was all <coughs> abbreviated that nobody understood. I had no clue of what was going on. But I did know when I read the white paper the very first time, I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. And it opened up a passion that there, there has been no other crypto project out that has sparked that. And I have mined a few, and I have a few, and I have wallets, and I have everything. Else. Right now, they're all, to me... To me, this is just me. They're not. They're not worth my time. I'm not saying they're a waste of time. They're not worth my time. Okay. And what I know, what I believe I know from Pi, the amount of time that I've put into Pi, my reward is worth what I'm putting in. That's me. That's that is not anybody else. That is just me. I, I mean, I believe I know, 
you know, if I'm getting pie for life, for the rest of my life, I'm not going to be here much longer. But if I got pie for the rest of my life, and I have a platform to buy what I need and want, using pie, and not using the cash that I'm getting from other places, if I'm using pie to buy what I need, and if I can, buy what I want. It will get to a point to where, you know, I live in a small town. I think the population is like fifteen or 20,000. And in that town, in this town that I live in, I can go to downtown and pretty much find everything I need or want inside of this town. 15,000 people. We have a community of, you know, I was, I've been saying 18 plus. I think Nicholas did or Core did put out an announcement that we had passed, surpassed 19. So, and that's been a while, but we got to be close to 20 or 21 million probably because we're on, in the ballpark. But anyway, somewhere between 18 and 20 is where we're sitting right now. And with 18 or 20 million people, I mean, the closest I can, I mean, as I start trying to figure things out, it's a, it's a mid-sized country. I mean, it's not, it's not a low, I mean, if you look at the population graph, of, a, of countries, pie is up off the bottom. I mean, it's probably almost to the middle of world countries as far as population goes. Okay. Now, relating it back to me, I live in a town with about fifteen or 20,000 people, and I can find everything I need or pretty much want. Okay. And I don't have to go too far out of where I'm at to get to a bigger city to get what I can't find here. And that's all within 20 miles. With a fraction, I mean, we're talking decimal point of what Pi community is right now. I mean, for me to put it in perspective, Pi community at 20,000 people is bigger than LA and San Francisco combined and throw in some other San Jose and maybe two of them. Two more towns. San Jose and Hollister, San Francisco, L.A., San Jose and Hollister, you throw them together, that's how big Pi is. I, can, I understand that. I understand that. Or put L.A., San Francisco, Bakersfield, Fresno together. Now I definitely know what you're talking about. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of real estate. And if you, if you look at, uh, yeah. the, let's look at it from the way the system is set up now, the, cur the current monetary system that we use now, we have no choice in. It is, it, this is what we have to use. And anything that has come up and tried to challenge it has either got squashed or got people killed. Anything that has tried to break away from central bank or world banking has gotten squashed or got somebody killed. This is some serious stuff, man. You know, and I'm looking at it from U.S. history. I don't know a lot of history about a lot of the other countries going around and how their monetary system works and all that. Okay. I do know Russia went bankrupt in the 80s somewhere and their rubles were worth nothing. They weren't even worth anything inside the country. They were worth nothing. You remember that. And I've seen a couple other countries that have gone bankrupt or whatever, where they, they've stopped. I mean, they, the one that I saw, they were letting the kids play with it out in the yard, like playing in the leaves. I mean, they had it stacked up floor to ceiling, and they were using it as fire, they were using it as firewood to keep themselves warm because it was useless. It was worth it. It was nothing. But we don't have, as a society, as humanity, we don't have a choice but to use that system because we're being told to use that system. That is the only system we have. Okay. And if you look at, all right, if you put out 
if you, you know, I gotta, I gotta throw this in. If you have never seen the movie 1984, you need to watch it. You really need to watch it. Because in the time that I've been in Pi, and I'm, it's just, it's just a small. I mean, Pi, pi is just a small drip in the bigger, in the, in the bigger scheme of things. But it's got a power to change things, big time. But if, if you look at 19, the movie 1984, it's how people were, how society was conditioned, and basically giving up their free will, their critical thinking, their what, and they were all controlled by something else. Yeah. I mean, when you watch this whole apartment complex, they all, everybody gets up at the same time, does their thing. They walk like zombies to the shop and they do their thing and, and they all come back and they do it. That's, okay. Being in pie, being in pie, yeah, it's not the same, but, man, it's opened my eyes to a lot. It really has. Because what I've seen is up until, up until I got the pie, I didn't care about nothing. I would rather get drunk, get high, and screw everything that's going on around the outside. I didn't care. I didn't care who the president was. I don't care who was going to Congress. I didn't care if the world fell apart. It didn't affect me. I didn't let it affect me. I was, I was 90, I'm going to say 95 to 98% off the grid when I got here. When I joined Pi, you couldn't find me. Yeah, I wasn't a tin hat, but you couldn't find me. I was off the grid. I had no bank account, no credit cards, nothing in my name that anybody could track me with. Nothing. No pg e bill. I had nothing. I was off. I had no cell. I have a cell phone, but I have no cell phone bill. I was off the grid, man. Okay. So when you guys start talking about, you know, I hear everybody talking about privacy and identity theft and all this. If you have one. If you have a credit card, a student loan, you're in college, you have a car loan, you have a mortgage payment, you have a utility bill, you have an internet bill, everything you're talking about privacy. Now, I do believe in privacy and I, I don't believe in what the government's doing as far as coming into our, tapping into our privacy. No, I don't believe that. But as far as our privacy and what is being how it's being played, how we're being played. No. If you have a cell phone, if you have any kind of social media account, your identity is already out there. Your identity is out there. I can, I can, if I get a little piece of information on you, I can find you. Anybody can find you. I don't need much. I don't need much. And I'm not a hacker, and I'm not a, I'm not a computer dude, man. And if I can find you, a lot of people can find you. Okay. So, I see all this coming in. And what I see, what I, what I see, and what I've learned, okay, what crypto is today, it, it, what crypto is today isn't what it was originally meant to be. The power, the the power, the power of change, the power of just the power of crypto was given away. It really was. With it, you can argue with me or whatever. This is how I see it, and how I understand it, and how I how I've come to learn it. Okay. The the U.S. pretty much controls everything. Everything is pegged to the U.S. dollar, the reserve, I mean, we are the reserve currency. Everything is tied to it, and everything is all figured in dollars and all whatever. And when I was growing up, the dollar had buying power value. It did. It did. I mean, I can remember being a little kid, having 25 cents, 50 cents. I could go into our local mini mart, or, I mean, it was a mom and pop place. And I could load up with, I mean, I could walk out with my pocket stuffed with candy for 25 cents. <laughs> you can't, you, 25, you take 25 cents and try to get a candy bar today? No, I'm going to laugh you out. I'm going to laugh you out. 25, shit, you better pull out a $5 bill to get a candy bar. Okay. 
we have no control over all of that. That is all happening from somewhere above. They are controlling the system. They are controlling our monetary system. But what's happened is the gap between us and them, and I'm talking the 1%, 2%, multi-billionaire, whatever. I mean, they're 1% or 2%. They don't give a shit about us. No. They want what we have to add to their bank account. And they're setting up the rules and made the rules to do it. And the more money they print and the more devaluation the dollar has, the more they make. Yeah. Because of how the system is set up. We live on a credit system. If, they're, if they are not creating credit for us to borrow, then the whole thing falls apart. If you, if you stopped borrowing... I, I, no, I still live on cash. I have no credit. I have no, I have no debt. None. None. And if everybody in the world said, no, I'm not having no more debt, would shut this, it would shut the whole world down. Because the whole thing is set up on debt. The whole thing is set up on you borrowing debt. Wanting the bigger house. Wanting the bigger car. Wanting the, okay, wanting the, okay. Now, I can't, I don't know about the rest of the world. I really don't. Because I'm, but I don't know of too many people here in the United States that don't have at least two or three credit cards in their personal billfold that probably is close to being maxed out. Yeah. And you go, I mean, you go to work every day and you do your thing and you do, okay. And might make <coughs> might make your interest payments on the month. You might get a little bit towards principal, but the credit card debt keeps getting bigger. The debt keeps getting bigger. And now, if you don't have a credit score, you can't borrow no more. You can't borrow no more if you don't have a decent credit score. Well, right now, the economy is so screwed up. The interest, I mean, at one point, the interest rate was ready to go negative. I think it's up to one. I mean, if you have, if you have top of the line credit, and all you, you know, you can get like a, what is it, 1.5, 1.7 interest rate on a 30-year fixed home loan. Okay. And they're still printing money, man. They're still printing money. And we have no choice. We have no choice. That's the system that we have to live in. And what I've seen, what I've seen in here and what, what crypto has become and what I see, what I've seen it being in pie. And it's happening all over. I mean, it's happening all over. But I see a concentrated empire. Okay. We've become a society. And this is, around, this is around the world. They have us chasing the dollar. They do. They have us chasing the dollar. Everybody wants, everybody wants a dollar. Everybody wants a dollar. Everybody wants to, wants it. Okay. And because we want to be where they're at. We'll never get there. Not in the system that we're at. They will never let us get there. No way. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. As hard as as hard as we try, we do all that. But you gotta that mentality. That mentality, and what the crypto space has come, become over twelve years, thirteen years. Two thousand nine. We're in two thousand twenty-one. Twelve, thirteen years. Okay, I'm, you know, whatever. So we're in the we're in the ten or twelve year range. In that time, what the space has become and what, because really, if you look at the overall, the overall seven point five billion people, there's not that many in crypto. Crypto is a drop in the bucket in the world economy. It's just a it's. It's a it's a little player. It's not even okay. Oh, Bitcoin, I, and I'm not. I don't want to take it, anything away from Bitcoin. Bitcoin is doing some amazing things. It is right now. It's still doing some amazing things. But you you cut its legs off. You cut its legs off. I, yes. Anybody that was in the Bitcoin community in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. You cut bit you cut Bitcoin's legs off because you didn't see it. You didn't see it. I, hit me up. I, I, 
because you didn't see it. Okay. Bitcoin should have done. Bitcoin should have. Bitcoin should have rocked this place. I mean, Bitcoin should have. Bitcoin should have shook shook the world up, and it did. Yes, it's a phenomenon. It's worth value, but it's not. It's not what it should have been. I, I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, and I will support my position. It's not what it should have been. Okay. And in that time, it's become a instrument, a tool to trade for other stuff. Okay, why does everybody want the dollar? Why does everybody want the dollar bill? Why does everybody want the money? Why? I'm, I'm honestly asking. I am honestly asking. What? Why do you want? The dollar. What does the dollar do for you? Why do you want it so bad? You have Bitcoin. But you don't want Bitcoin. You want the dollar. So you trade the Bitcoin for the dollar. So you have the dollar. Because I'm creating well I'm building wealth. I'm building in the dollar. Because everybody sees the dollar. They just print more. You want more? <laughs> Okay, now think about it. This is, no, I'm, this is serious. Think about what you're creating. Wealth. You need the dollars to create wealth. If you don't have, if you don't have the buying power in the dollar, in the single, then you need that many more dollars to buy the same thing. Now that's value. That's value. Right now, everything is set on price. All the exchanges, stock exchanges, crypto exchanges, they are price. They are a price. This is this price that this person will buy or sell at, okay? And at a point, it's slow enough, is it a price? I will buy at or sell at or whatever it is. Okay? It's price, it's not a value. You, you need to understand, at least the people, you need to understand that. Price and value. Price is dictated to us with all of the models and everything else that and this is where we can lose a second chance to do where it should have done the first time. Because Bitcoin Bitcoin was new, nobody knew about it, nobody knew what it was, nobody knew how to deal with it, nobody knew how to handle it. And I mean it 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 started someplace, but because of where it started, it got it got bad. It got a bad reputation and whatever. I mean, Bitcoin's economy started on the dark web. That's where Bitcoin. That's where Bitcoin. What it was doing was what it was supposed to do. But it was somewhere where it would. I mean, for for seven and a half or seven billion people at the time. You have, what, a few, few, few hundred thousand down, and maybe a hundred thousand down, down. I mean, it's bigger than that. But you, you, I mean, you don't have millions of people down on the web. No. I mean, yeah, you, well, you don't know what the county is because you, you don't know because it's not being tracked, whatever. And that's cool. I buy, I mean, I don't, I don't have that I buy. I, okay. But it's just, it's not, I don't know. But that's where Bitcoin found that's where Bitcoin found its economy. Economy. Not price. Economy. Where people were using it to buy goods and services. And it should have done it up here in, in the light of day. But some dude, some entrepreneur, hey, this is a good this is a good deal. I mean, even though the price it was a lot of Bitcoin to do whatever they were doing. Because of price. See, I think they may have started value, like valuing it on their own time. And that's an economy. Trading is a price. There's a difference. And because everybody's, everybody, everybody now knows about Bitcoin, hears about Bitcoin, hears about, okay, everybody knows about it. They know a little bit about it. They, uh, most people know what they hear from hearing that on the news or you know 
yes, Bitcoin made a lot of overnight millionaires and billionaires because of how you twisted the system. And cool, not, I mean, that's cool. But what, where, the, where, where I think the issue comes in, because you did that and the industry built up around it, and every project that has come behind it, you've made do the same thing. So it's just become habit or that it's just become the norm of any crypto project coming out. It, it's going to follow that model and do that. And it's, I see it in Pi every day. I've seen it for two years. And every time we get a new, because Pi gets somewhere between 20 and 40,000 new pioneers a day. And you can see when they when when it switches, when yeah, you can see when it rolls over. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's Groundhog Day, man. It might be an hour, two hours, three, four hours, five hours. You're going through you're going through chat, and you're dealing with all all these new pioneers and all these questions and all this new stuff. And you finally get to I mean, the room finally gets to a point to where you're starting to have some kind of conversation that. All right, this is where this is this is this is where okay, and then all of a sudden you start over where you did. That means you just cycle over, just cycle over. So to try to get into any depth of conversation, to okay, it's hard. Now there is a senior chat that after 90 days, 30 after three months, 90 days, 90 sessions, you have access to the senior chat, okay, and most I mean most of the time. The conversations aren't bad in there. They're, I mean, they're, they're better than the new chats. And you can discuss some things. But where the issue comes in for me, for me, I don't know, I can only speak for me, how I see it, how I view it. When, when, when you have people that know the space, and come in as experts. And they are, they are experts in their field. I, I, I have never taken anything away from them. I have never taken anything away from anybody that knows the space, knows how the space works, works the space, makes money, do all that. On other social media, promoting other platforms, other coins, other whatever. Kudos, man, kudos. And I know you have you have big followings, but you also get arrogant. I've watched it a couple of times in, in Pi. Okay. Because you've learned and you believe you've learned and you know you've learned and I know you've learned and everybody knows you've learned and you put out how it is. But it struck it struck me strange one morning. I was watching a guy. He's a he's a crypto trader and he he can't legally give advice. But he puts out his, how, how he's trading. So he's doing the same thing. He's covering his ass because he can't give legal advice or financial advice. So, but he'll put out what his moves are and you can pick up on and go with. And it, it, what really blew me away was the first comment out that he pointed out was this is not about fate trading. This is about crypto trading. And it wasn't like the next sentence that he's trading crypto for fate to increase his bank account or increase his wealth. I don't care how you slice it, folks. How you believe it, how you think about it, how you do whatever. Okay? You're using crypto as the tool or the instrument to get fake currency, the dollar bill. You're chasing the dollar. Whatever you're... No matter how you line up. How you, you're chasing the dollar because you believe wealth comes from the dollar because that's what old money is. Old money is wealth. And I'm talking old money Rockefellers and Carnegie's and J.P. Morgan and old money. Vanderbilt's and all that. Old money. Okay. But you're missing how they got their old money. They got their old money from supplying a service to the community 
at the time. They did it building the railroads, they did it with the steel mills, they did it with the oil industry, they did it with... They built their wealth from material. They built their wealth from material. And then, as, as they became more powerful, their wealth grew. They grew into the people controlling the system that we are in now. They are the ones that set up the banking system. They are the ones that set up the rules for this and that and the other. I mean, if you get into history, the history is pretty trippy. Vanderbilt and J.P. Morgan were the, they were the, in the, in the states at the time, they were the richest people. Rockefeller took Morgan down. He, Rockefeller shut J.P. Morgan's bank down. Shut down closed, killed, killed the banking end of it. But it didn't kill his wealth. It killed that portion of it. As, as they grew their wealth and grew their, by supplying, they came up with a service or a good that supplied the population to buy. We're getting the money from the people buying their good or service. That's how they created their wealth. As their wealth became bigger, then they were buying stocks and companies. I mean, at that time they didn't have crypto. So it was getting into the banking industry. It was doing this, it was doing that. And the stock, then it became stock market. The stock market was the crypto of the day. Then they were buying, but they're buying stock in tangible goods. I mean, they're buy, they're, when you buy a stock, you're buying a piece in a company. Yes, it's a lot slower than ups and downs. And down and down. The crypto exchanges are, the stock exchanges on steroids. That's all they are. And they've become that way because we, you, you, I'm, I'm, because I'm not in it. You've made it that way because of Fast cash, the quick adrenaline rush, just the, just the quick satisf satisfaction of getting it now. That's what we've become. The quick satisfaction of getting it now. The rush, the intensity, the focus. Okay. And yes, I may not be in it, but I, yeah, I was, I was around when the exchanges started up. I had a buddy around when he was involved when the exchanges first came about. That's what turned me off of Yeah, I, th this dude was like 20 years old, 22 years old. I thought he was going to have a heart attack. I really did. Watching what he was going through in those early days of, of the exchanges. That's what turned me off of it. Turned me off the whole deal. Okay. And when he turned me on to Bitcoin, when you could still mine it on a PC. Okay. And here's where, here's where I'm telling you that you guys screwed Bitcoin up. Uh, yes, I know. You can tell me that, yeah, no, that's what it's supposed to be, and it's supposed to be here, and we're making $60,000, and, you know, all of this. And Yeah, I watched him go through the cycles on the early days. But in when Bitcoin first came out, you could mine a lot of Bitcoin, a single person, on a single PC, with just regular CPU power. In those early, early days, you bet your ass you could. I didn't take the time to learn it. I didn't. I was too busy getting drunk and doing other stuff. And yeah, no, I, I was too busy to take the time to learn it. And then watching him, watching him go through it. As soon as you got, as soon as you guys started to realize, as soon as you realized, you could hook more than one computer together and mine faster than the two of you, three of you, four of you, five of you, and farm showed up. And is that because there's, you have, you have Bitcoin itself, and you have an industry that grew up around it. All, all of these Silicon, Silicon Valley chip manufacturers and card manufacturers, you know, card manufacturers and all that, you guys building farms pulled together. Yeah. You take, the farms chased the little guys out. Mm -hmm. That had, I mean, they had, as 
is as Bitcoin evolved, yes, it became, it became it became concentrated into the farms, and there are there are people there are people in Pi that were ex miners, ex Bitcoin miners that couldn't couldn't afford to run their rigs anymore, it just, because for him even though he had multiple setup systems in his garage set up, he couldn't compete with the farms, not with the electrical he was paying what his Bitcoin return was, he couldn't pay for it. He shut them down. There are a lot of people. There are a lot of people in life. And I'm gonna I'm probably gonna go out on a limb here. Okay? If you know Pi from the early days. There was there wasn't a lot of servers. There wasn't a lot of there was, yeah, no. And I I think I, I'm not quite sure, but I think core underestimated the growth of Pi. Core has always been trying to keep up with the growth of Pi. Always. Ever, since I've been here. Since I've been here. They've always been trying to keep up with the growth of Pi. They didn't have too many servers. I think when I got here, there was only like three or four servers. Okay. There were, I don't know, the chat rooms there were like 20 or something like that. And it got to a point, it did get to a point that I think it was I think it was right around 100,000. Before, before the hundred, it was either right before the hundred thousand, hundred thousand having, or just after the hundred thousand. Okay. With a hundred thousand people in the app, and we didn't. I mean, they were all weren't getting on that because some, some people knew that hey, I'm just pushing the button, I'm going about my business. But there was enough of us, and I, I was, I was, I was part of that. That when we all came in, when we all came into chat. We all kind of we seem kind of be on the same time schedule, even though we're all around. But we would all kind of drift in at the same time. We would shut the whole we would shut the whole system down within thirty minutes, yeah. and we did it on a regular basis. Yeah. So Core has always been keeping up, trying to keep up with growth. And I'm I'm going to go out on a limb. There are probably some old <laughs> Bitcoin. Mining rigs that are probably part of the server makeup for Pi. I would I would almost venture to guess, just because of conversations I've watched and seen and things that I, things I see go on early. Because they have the computing power, they have the compute, they have the system. Okay, they're well past supernodes. These systems are well past supernodes. I would, I would, I would almost bet my, yeah, okay. we're talking some high power computing power in these rigs that are probably making, because they're stretched around the world, they're stretched around the world, that are probably making foundation or whatever it is of Pi servers. I haven't heard a count on, server count on what Pi is up to, but the last I heard, the last server count I heard. That we were like 37 or 38 servers supporting Pi. Core, you know, I I hear a lot of I hear a lot of flack and a lot of of core. Core's crooked. Core's doing this. Core's doing that. Core's doing this. They're stealing. They're, they're shady. They're whatever. Da, da, da. And I'm not saying that I didn't I didn't have my doubts and my reservations in my when I first got here. First four months I was that I was here I was a bull in a china shop. I will tell you that straight up. I'll tell you that straight up. I was a bull in a china shop. Yeah, they didn't when I entertained, they didn't like seeing me coming because I was asking hard questions that that nobody could answer, wanted to answer, and can't be answered till phase three. And the people that were here at the time are the people that have stuff going outside of the Pi main Pi community. And. As, 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 as 
here, <clears throat> here's where, here's where I was trying to get you to begin with, and I know I'm already deep into this video. Alright. Pi, the project Pi, has three phases. Phase 1 beta, phase 2 testnet, phase 3 live net. I mean, main net. Out of those three phases, Pi has two stages in this project. It's not written two stages in this project. It's how I, I, it's how I can separate it and maybe help explain where Pi is. Okay. In phase 1 and 2, stage 1. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. Okay. Because in phase three, stage two is pi. That is pi. Okay. When we're in phase three, stage two, that is pi. Bottom line. In phase one and two, stage one is not pi. Is not pi. It's pi in development. It's different. It's different. In phases one and two, stage one, pi is a private project. Start off. Phase, phase one, phase one and two, stage one, pi is a private project. Private. If the only reason we are here the only reason we are here is because CORE allowed us to be here. Yeah. Yes. They, they started the process. They started bringing in pioneers through their invitation code in the, pro, in the what, however, whatever they got, whatever they're writing, whatever they are writing. Yes, it, it's Office Stellar, it's Fourth Office Stellar, okay, but it, what Pi is using is a small piece of cell. They're using the node protocol to create blockchain. You have to understand that and realize it. Because I've, I've you know I love you guys, man. But you're killing, you're killing me, you're killing Pi. Because I understand what you're saying, that Pi is forked off a of stellar, and it can't, and then it can't do anything else but be stellar. Bullshit. And I know this from. I don't know the. I don't know the programming language of today. I don't know JavaScript. I don't know C plus plus. I don't know. Okay. I got. You got to go back farther for what I know. I mean, we're talking Fortran, Dow, DOS. That's when I was introduced. Okay. And I worked off of a spinoff of Fortran that became Dowtran, which Dow Chemical took off of Fortran. Took off of Fortran and created their own machine language, computer language. Okay. They can, Dow Chemical forked off of Fortran, or took Fortran, and made Dowtran. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as Fortran. It doesn't write the same. It doesn't do the same. It's not, okay. So it, it can be done. Don't tell me it can't be done. Because, you, because you're in today and you're up and, and you know and you have all of this? Yeah, bullshit. Okay? If you think, if you think that PhDs, doctors, doctors that have been trained, doctors, that know blockchain, have taught blockchain, are involved in blockchain, can't take a piece of a program, because the protocol is only a program, you don't think that they can take a piece of a program and build another entire program around it? You need to wake the fuck up. You need to wake up. Man, you know, I hear people, they reverse engineer this and they reverse engineer that and they do that and they figure this out and they figure that out. Okay? If you, man, I know hackers. I know hackers. <laughs> They can get into a program. I don't care what program it is. They can get into a program. And they can, they can do their thing. And you will never find it. 
guaranteed. Okay, so, so to think that they, to think that because it's stellar, that pi is stellar, you're wrong. You're wrong because you don't read the light. You didn't. You don't because you can't see it on GitHub or because it's closed sourced. It is. It can't be true. Well, guess why it's closed source? I don't want you to see what it is. I mean, I'm, I know I'm speaking for them. But if it, I'm looking at it, if it were mine, I wouldn't want you in here messing with my program because you're going south and I'm going north. I don't want you in here. No, you don't have access to what I'm writing. It's mine. Yeah. And because I think the difference is they Core hasn't said anything. Core wouldn't say anything. Core wouldn't... The core's not that way. They're too, they play things too, too close to the vest. Okay. They don't need to tell anybody what they're doing. They don't. They don't. No. Man, I've only been in this. I've been only been in this a short time. And there has been a lot of issues and a lot of projects and a lot of <clears throat> bad blood created through these projects. People have spun off and done their. They've taken whatever and they've gone off and done their, done their own project. I don't want to get into names like this. I don't want, but it's happened in almost every major project that is out, that is standalone out today. And to say Core stole something from Stellar, you can't. If, if their protocol, if Stellar protocol is open source, free to the public, to use. They're, they didn't steal nothing. You know, you ought to take it as a kudos, man. Because there were a lot of other protocols to choose from to build Pi, to start the foundation of Pi. Core chose Stellar because it's one of the best protocols, fastest protocols out today. You ought to take it as a kudos instead of them stealing it from you. Because if Pi does what it's going to do, Stellar's going to get the credit for it too. I know. No, you don't. I know. You don't see. Because people can't see past today. They can't see. We don't see anymore. It's all about today. Okay? And I know me, we'll probably go round and round again about my views on it. But it's my views. It's how I see things playing out. How I see things coming together. How I read things into what Core has written. I don't care about what Stellar's written. I don't care about what Bitcoin's written. I don't, because that's not the project I'm involved in. I'm involved in this one. And I know from the purest of Bitcoin, the purest of Stellar, the purest of um, XRP, you're all, we're all purists. We're all purists. We're all going to defend what we what we're involved in. I know, it is. But it shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't have to. Okay? Because I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from every, everybody. That's how, I mean, I've learned a lot from people in Bitcoin. I've learned a lot from Seller. I've learned a lot from, I've, I've learned a lot from everything. Okay? But the difference is, for me, I'm open to the learning from everybody. I am. I may, I may argue and I may debate and I may whatever, but I'm open to learning as well. Because I don't, I don't know it all. I don't know it all. I don't know enough. I don't know the tech enough. Okay? But I do know how the tech is put together in the foundation. Yeah. 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 And th that, being involved in that, in that process of changing a manual, hardwired piece of equipment. And it was like, I mean, there was like seven or eight pieces of equipment that made up this one machine. And we converted it all to computer control. All of it. Every, every bit of it. Every bit of it. Went from manual control to computer control. Yes, I know DO and AO logic. I wrote them both. I've troubleshot them both to get this piece of equipment going. And I've had bosses, managers, and I was part of the engineering crew. I'm a, I'm, I'm, 
man, I was like 20, 23, 24, 25 when I, I was part of the engineering corps. And shit, I didn't finish high school. And I was part of, I mean, when the plant manager came into the office, yeah, I wasn't, I was part, I died, died, yeah. They were losing a million dollars a day while that machine was down. You know, they, they were, no, no. And we were all part of, I mean, I, we were all, we were a team. We were a team. We, okay. And I learned a lot, and I learned a lot from the guy that I worked for. He was an awesome boss. And so, to tell me I don't know how it goes together. Tell me I don't know how a project comes together. How it, it comes, kiss my ass. Okay. Yes. And I, I'm, these are PhDs from Stanford. Okay? They may have penciled it out in a bar, and they may have come up with it out of the blue. But when the rubber meets the road and the nuts and bolts come, no. They sat down and they figured all this out. We don't have to. We don't need to. We don't. I don't care how smart you think you are, how great of a program you are, how much you know of this project, uh, of, of Stellar or whatever. I don't care how much you know of it. They don't need you in this project. They don't want you in this project. They don't care. They have their own mission. Respect them for their own mission. But you don't. You don't because you're expecting you're expecting things from stage phase three, stage two. Yeah. And we're not. We're in phase one, two, stage one. And in phase two, stage one, nothing matters. Because it all can change in an instant. And we have nothing to say over. Nothing. It's their project. It's theirs, not ours. It doesn't have to be transparent. It doesn't have to be open sourced. And it's definitely not decentralized because we're not up and running. And if you read the right paper, all of those will happen. Phase three, stage two. Because in, in stage one, in stage one is when you debug, you figure, you do, you, you write your program, you do whatever, you get it, okay, until you get it to, and see, I think they launched phase two early, phase two testnet early, I think they launched it too early. We weren't ready for phase two. We weren't ready for testnet when they launched testnet, but it fit their date, and we blew the, we blew the launch date. Yes, the community blew the launch date. It's not on court, it's on the community, okay? Because, because of us trying to do what we want to do and not doing what Pi needed done. Because we didn't, man, <laughs> and I'm going to say, I did it in the first four months too. After the, after the first four months, no, I didn't anymore. I didn't, and I, and after that first four months when I'm committed, being, I committed to being in Pi. Either way, I'm here till the end, whether we boom or bust. I'm here to the end. Either way. And I've had my I've had my mom, moments from then to now. My doubts, my concerns, my whatever's going on. Some of my share with some people, just because I got to get it out of my head. And there's some people that I can go to that I can get a reasonable answer to, to quell my concerns. In. Yes, I, there are people, there are people that I can go to that are part of, they're not the court, but they're part of court team that I can get enough of an answer to quell my insights, my skepticism, my doubts. And I know, I don't care about you. It, it, at this point, I don't care about you. We are part of the community. But until you, until people wake up, okay, because because you're still, everybody's still going here. Okay? Because you know what you know, and you don't believe what I know. What you, okay? So, and the community coming in, the figures coming in, aren't helping Pi. They're hurting Pi. And they've hurt Pi from the beginning. I just didn't, I mean, I didn't really see it, and I didn't have enough. I didn't have the opponent to stand up and say, hey, no, this is, it's time to stop. 
And I, you know, I may get, I don't know, I may get booted before we get to the end. But I know we're getting short. And that's what, that's where, yeah. And I, I and I do. I try to keep, I try, I try to keep things under control. And I try to, especially in chats and whatever, because I like being a mom. I like helping new pioneers. I like learning and expanding and growing and teaching and learning and what I, I like being a I like helping pioneers. I like sharing because all of what I got was given to me for free. Man, I can't, if I, if I had to list out what degrees, I mean, they're not masters or whatever, but I would put the level of education that I have from Pine, the two years that I've been here, I got bachelor's degrees in a lot of areas. I got a bachelor's degree in a lot of areas, guaranteed. And I didn't have to step foot once in a classroom. I learned all from here. It didn't cost me a dime. I have no student loan that needs to be repaid for. So when people say Pi, Pi is a waste of time, the waste of time is on how you choose to use it. The waste of time is on you. And if you're wasting time, get the hell out. Get the hell out. Come back later. That states the first thing in the FAQ. Pi is not quick money. It's a long-term project, and it may not be for you. Okay? There it is. Well, you know, it's free, and it's but No, it's not free. It's not free. We have to earn it. We have to earn it. Nobody says the work has to be hard, but we have to earn it. And there are, if you read the white paper, there are certain expectations and certain things we should be doing. When we first joined PI, there is a schedule of events that should happen when we first joined PI. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? No, we just push, we just push a button. We just push a button. Mm. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. Some of, now some of us see. Some people see it. And when I the ones that see it when I when I hear them, I know I give them kudos, man, because they saw it. They saw what was going on, and then they ask they ask the right questions. Okay. What's the next step? What what what's the next? Uh, what's the next thing that I need to do? We're asking the right questions. I haven't heard the right question in the chat for a long time. I haven't. Everybody's asking the wrong questions because they're concerned about something that doesn't need to be concerned about. And there are people that saw it, did it, asked the right questions, and helping Pi grow. But those are like those are like far and few between. Those are far and few between. And it's gotten even worse because what I think happened, what, what I think has happened to this point. Anybody that knows crypto, knows the space, knows how to trade in the space, whatever it is, has, has, that's who started Pi. Under 100,000 people. That's who started Pi. And as time has rolled on, people experienced in crypto, experiencing community, has rolled in. If how I got turned on to it was my buddy that is into crypto. Otherwise, I would have never gotten turned on to it. I got turned on. He turned me on to it before 100,000 pioneer, pioneers. Because he's involved in the space. That's what was going on in the beginning. As time has rolled up, now we're getting to... <laughs> people are grabbing anybody they can, wherever they can, to build their earning team. Most people coming in now have probably have no clue about the space or pi. They have no idea what's going on. Other than what they've been told or heard from the news or, you know, haven't read the, you know, they know Bitcoin, they know the exchanges. I mean, you can go on YouTube, you punch in crypto on YouTube or crypto trading on YouTube, and you'll have sheets of sheets come up with people giving advice. Crypto traders, get, you you can find whatever you want. I mean. Which supports what it what the space is today. So when people come in come in to Pi, especially people now that don't know anything, and people that are coming in that <laughs> these are the, these are the people that crack me up the most. They really are because they may they may be in 
they, they may be crippled baby for six months or maybe a year or whatever, and they think they're hot shit. They really do. Okay. And they come into pie and they start, man, if you know pie and you're talking pie, I have no issue. You come in and be as arrogant as you want. Guaranteed. I know, and I do it, and I don't mean to, but I do it at times. I get arrogant because I know my shit. Okay, I've learned my shit. I've taken, I've taken my time to learn what this project is. <laughs> I get the, we get the. <laughs> These guys come in, and they may have YouTube followings, and they may, you know, whatever it is, and they got it, and they're, they, they got it all hooked together, and they're. What's even worse is when they're just chasing Satoshi. <laughs> they're not even chasing Bitcoin. They're just chasing Satoshi. And they know it. They got it hooked up. And they come in pie. And they start talking their crap. Okay. Where the issue comes in is twenty to 40,000 new people a day coming in. You take somebody like that and you put them in the chat. And they just start going and going and going. And they will be believed for this project. And then these people that they're talking to, that they're believing them, is buying it and that's the way it's going to be, then they go out and they search unofficial sites on social media. And they can find the information to back this person up. Because they'll, they'll, come, they'll come back in the chat and say what they found on this space, or Google, or that, and they're, they're talking, they're talking not pie, they're talking crypto. Yeah. And when I have, when, I don't take it personal, I really don't, it just cracks me up. When, when I'm in chat, and I hear somebody new, or somebody in this, in crypto and in the space, coming in, to chat <laughs> and telling the chat that mods don't know what we're talking about that we have no clue of what's going on that we should be removed and replaced with other people <laughs> dude you need to shut up you need to yes because the one who doesn't know is the one talking what makes it hard is all we have is here. We have there are a few official sites that nobody follows, or very few follow. Nobody reads the white paper. They don't go to the mod FAQ and they don't go to the FAQ. So they don't have any foundational official information from inside the app. The only official Pi is the only official app for Pi. You want any official information, it comes off Pi app. Pi app puts out the information and it distributes to all the other official sites. If you're going to get official, it's going to come from here first. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got, I mean, you hit me in the right mood, I'll, I'll take, I will set you straight. I will chase you off and I will make you cry. Trust me. <laughs> and anybody, anybody that knows me, that has been around me any length of time, will tell you. I will cut you up. I will make you cry, and I will send you to the house. Yes. 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 Because you're not helping pie. You're hurting it. You're hurting it. And you're making our job. Every mod, every mod in Pi app, when we put up with people like that, you're making our job harder. And it's hard enough it is dealing with what we're dealing with. We don't need any help from anybody else. Okay? What we need help is people that understand Pi, even if it's only a couple of minutes throughout your day, as you're coming in and you're pushing a button, if you know Pi and you know what Pi needs and you're working to get Pi to what it needs, when you come in and push the button and start your session, drop by chat. Just drop a couple of pearls of wisdom, man. Makes a difference in the chat. And you get a chat full of Pi, especially a new chat, a newbie chat, you get a newbie chat full of experienced pioneers, that chat changes quick. That changes quick because you have no legs to stand on. You can't, man. When you got that much, when you got that much knowledge, 
that much seniority, that much, and it doesn't have to be that you've had to be here this long. I mean, I, there's people that pick it up quick. There aren't. And you get, if, when, they, when they're talking right and they're putting out correct information, they're doing their thing, I don't care whether you've, you've been here one day or two days, or 90 days, or 100 days, or two years. If you're putting out the right information, the sooner you can be putting out the right information, the farther ahead the pie's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Because we have to switch, we have to switch to the majority. We have to switch the majority to the I mean, the minority needs to become the majority, and the majority needs to become the minority, if I had a chance. And where, where the first, I'm gonna cut this one, it's pretty long, and then I'm gonna come back. Um, all right, guys.